there's no need for men to lie to women. If we like you enough, we'll lie to ourselves on your behalf. Oh my God, this comment. This, this made me, I literally stopped everything I was doing to reply to this. Isn't that the truth, y'all? This is why, this is why you really shouldn't be dating unless you have a strong community, a strong community of, uh, of people who are doing the, the work on themselves and are really in touch with truth, their own truth about themselves and are brave enough and, and care enough about you to call you on your crap. Because, oh my God, y'all, the lies, the lies that I tell myself about the biggest D-bags. Ah, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Teenage boys laughing. That's what that noise is. The lies that I would tell myself about men who were trash. Like, okay, well, maybe he's bad. And the thing is, is that if you have women who have, who are, have not been decentering men and doing that hard work, have not been healing their own trauma, especially from men, and who have a, a, um, a lot of really unhealthy relationships and really no track record of anything healthy, they're going to give you bad advice. I'm not saying you can't be friends with these people, but do not seek counsel from people who are make terrible dating choices. Or at least who have not learned from those mistakes, right? There's plenty of people who have said amazing stuff to me about dating who are not currently in a good relationship and have had a string of bad ones, but they've learned hard lessons from those and they've taken those lessons and, and move forward with those lessons rather than just repeating the same thing over and over and over again. I cannot tell you how many breadcrumb guy who I talk about a lot on here. Uh, this D bag that I wrote about for Shondaland, you can Google this, you want to read it. The people I was getting advice about him from are what kept me in that relationship. And it was so funny. I just remember like listening to their excuses for him. There was a part of me that was like, this is this this is like so messed up. Why are we why are why are we talking so much about this person? Why are we theorizing what it could be that is what's behind him not returning my texts in a timely manner? What's behind him never inviting me over to his place? Could and I remember one friend being like, he's probably married. And I was like, no, there's no way he's married. And he wasn't married. But for all I know, he had a girlfriend. I don't even know. I never figured out what his story was. But I was always like something not a girlfriend, you know? And I realized that when I met his uncle out on accident, we ran into his uncle at a restaurant six months into this relationship. And he introduced me as his friend. After we'd had multiple conversations about how we're dating and you know where we're going next, his friend. I never met a single family member. And then me and some delusional women that I was friends with were like, yeah, maybe it's because, oh, I mean, me and one of my friends came with the, up with this theory that he's actually never been in a relationship before. He just doesn't know any better. Uh, I found out towards the end, he was not only in a long-term relationship, he lived with his last ex. That like everything that we thought of, all the lies that, that I told myself and that my, my friends who were, had, you know, bad dating advice, the lies they co-signed that, you know, all of it was nonsense. All of it was BS. None of it was true. But I liked him, not because I really liked him. I actually, he was a loser. But he, he really hit that like daddy issues thing of just me, if this man will just like me, right? I was so played into my trauma responses around an unavailable man that I did not see the writing on the wall because the excitement of getting that text after waiting days for that text when I finally, I mean, I hated him. I hated him. I deserve better than this. I know that. Bing. Oh, hey, what do you do tonight? Oh, let's go out. <laughs> and so if I have the, the best advice that I have, and I'm not a dating coach, y'all, but from my lived experiences, anything you're afraid to tell your closest friends who give you really good dating advice, whatever you're afraid to tell them or whatever truth you withhold from them is the very thing that you need to tell them because they're going to tell you something you probably don't want to hear and you know it. And if you keep going to friends who don't have what you want or who have not learned hard lessons and have a lot of wisdom around dating, if you keep going to friends who center men who are pick me or cool girl or any of those things, 
they will give you the worst advice. And even if you intuitively know that that's probably bad advice, that part of you that really is like wants to keep repeating the cycle of violence or whatever it is that's going on from your childhood, it's going to be like, yep, see, they, they, they think it's cool. They think it's totally normal for me to text them while I'm next to this dude I'm dating, text my friend and be like, hey, will you suggest taking a photo together because he doesn't really like photos, but if you suggest it, then he'll feel pressured into taking it and then we can have a photo together. Like the amount of manipulation of trying to get this man to, to realize that he loves me because I'm just this damaged person, this used car that I just need this person to buy, right? God. This was like, you know, I've had a, like two steps forward, one step back, right? In my healing, in, in everything that I do. But in my dating life too, the breadcrumb guy was absolutely two steps back for my healing. And part of that was because I did not turn to the community who would hold me accountable when dating him. And towards the end, when I was fed up, I finally asked one of my guy friends who I knew would be honest with me. And he just goes, yeah, he doesn't like you, Melanie. <laughs> and I was like, but, but, but. He goes, no, it's crystal clear to me. This dude does not like you. Sorry. And once I heard that, I couldn't unhear it. Surround yourself with people who will keep you from lying to yourself or who will at least call it for what it is, delusion. And find a, a, a few people who will hold a microphone to your intuition and that voice that wants healing, that voice that wants something better for you than the cycles of violence and the, the same crap. Those people. It doesn't mean that you can't have, be friends with people with lots of people, be very careful who you seek counsel from because their advice could lead you into making decisions that ruin your life or even take your life. Because again, dating men, especially in, as a woman under patriarchy, is the most dangerous thing you will ever do other than give birth. But I think even dating men is more dangerous. Do not play, play around, y'all, and do not trust the advice of people who are playing around.